In this important lesson, we're going to be talking about transformations, meaning we're going to be talking about vertical translation where the graph goes up or down, and also horizontal translation where the graph goes left and right. We're also going to be talking about vertical stretch as well as horizontal stretch. Let's begin. If we're given the function f of x, which is the yellow graph that you see here, and then if you add a constant value of k, then the graph will go up vertically by k units. So we start with this yellow graph here, and then if we move it up k units, we now have that red graph k units up. Let me show you using a parent function of f of x equals square root of x. If you take the graph of square root of x and plot it, it looks like this. Then if you take that function, square root of x, and add 2, then we're going to be taking this graph and moving it up 2 units, where the vertex will now be here at 0, 2. Likewise, if we go ahead and subtract 2, then we're just going to be doing the opposite. We're going to be taking this parent graph and move it down 2 units, where the vertex now here is at 0, negative 2. And now for the horizontal translation, meaning we're going to be moving the graph left and right. Notice the h, the constant, is inside the parentheses right next to x. And if h is less than 0, then the graph will go to the left. For example, if we let h equals negative 2, and if we were to put negative 2 where that h is, it would become f of x minus of negative 2, or f of x plus 2. So if we have x plus 2, then the graph will go to the left 2 units. Let me show you using the same paragraph as the vertical translation, y or f of x equals square root of x. Again, we have that same graph. Then notice that the minus 2 is inside the square root and right next to the x. And a lot of times people think that because it's minus 2, you should move it to the left 2. But just like it was shown here, where h is a negative value, the graph will instead go to the right two units. Look, again, we started with the origin, 0, 0. Now the vertex here is at 2, comma, 0. Once again, I want to emphasize that when it's a horizontal translation, if it's minus, you want to move it to the right. So again, because it's square root of x minus 2, we move it to the right two units. Then the opposite is square root of x plus 2. So once again, when it's plus 2, you need to do the opposite of what you think it should be, or common sense, is that plus 2, you think it should go to the right, but no. Instead, it needs to go to the left two units when it's plus 2. So remember this, when it's vertical, if it's plus, you go up. If it's minus, you go down. However, when it's horizontal, when it's minus, you need to go right, whereas when it's plus, you need to go left two units if it's plus two, like here. Vertical stretch is when you multiply a number in front of the function where that number is going to be greater than one. Notice. The yellow graph is the original function f of x, and then the red graph would be the graph of the f of x stretched vertically by a factor of a units. So let me show you once again using the parent function of y equals, or f of x equals square root of x. If we multiply by 3 in front of the square root of x, it gets vertically stretched by a factor of 3, and it ends up looking like that. Likewise, if we have a vertical compression, we again have a constant in front of the function. However, that constant will be a fraction between 0 and 1. That's why the graph will get squished. So again, we have that yellow graph, the original function f of x. However, if the number in front of the function a is less than 1, however positive, meaning between 0 and 1, then it gets compressed. It ends up looking like this red graph, and again, it gets compressed by a factor of a. Here's an example. If we're given 
the one third in front of square root of x, then because a number one third is less than one, it gets vertically compressed or squished in, and it ends up looking like this. Here's the last part of the lesson, the horizontal stretch. For the horizontal stretch, we're going to have the value of x multiplied by a number. However, that number is going to be less than 1, but positive, meaning between 0 and 1. Uh, for the vertical stretch, the constant in front of the function was greater than 1. However, when it's horizontally stretched, it's going to be between 0 and 1. Notice the yellow graph is going to be our original function or the graph. And the red graph is one that's been horizontally stretched because the value of x is multiplied by b. Here's an example. Again, given the original function or the parent function of f of x equals square root of x, and if we take the value of x and multiply that by one third, notice a fraction less than one, but positive, then the graph gets horizontally stretched. The opposite of that is going to be horizontal compression, where the value of x is once again multiplied by b. However, in this case, b is going to be greater than 1. Notice the yellow graph is the original function. And then the red graph is the one that's been horizontally compressed, meaning sideways. Again, notice that b has to be greater than 1. Using the parent function of f of x equals square root of x, and if we multiply the value of x by 3, again, notice that the 3 is not in front of the square root of x, rather it's directly in front of the x, then it's going to be horizontally compressed. So we would take this original function or the graph and compress it sideways or horizontally, and we end up with this graph right here. So using the transformations that we just learned, you're able to take the parent function or parent graph and then move it up and down, left and right, or stretch it vertically or horizontally.